Hello and welcome to episode three of our uh, Inside Number Nine uh, rundowns. We are evidently on season three uh, this week. Uh, the middle point of our journey into this wonderful series and we've got some incredible episodes to talk about uh do you have any just overall general thoughts about season three will before we jump into Um, our rundowns it's my personal favorite season um yeah i think it might be mine three and four are the best i think Three, maybe because of nostalgia reasons, I think they've all aged well, mm. um, yeah. which is a big, a good sign. And there's not a weaker one in, in the midst. This is very, very true. I, I yeah, I completely agree. I think, uh, I think, I'd pr- uh, I don't know. I, th- I think season four would maybe top it for me. I think... I think if we're talking about a complete rundown, I'd say season four, season three, season two, season one, season five. But I'd have to put some thought to that. Uh, yes. Well, let's jump straight into our orderings. What is your number six? Private view. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. This is, oh, here we go. <laughs> this is where it all goes wrong. Okay, well that's a punt from from me. So we'll wait. We'll oh. wait for that one. <laughs> Do you want to know what my number six is? What? <laughs> Riddle of the Sphinx. <laughs> oh no! No. So I'm, which I'm get, which I know is a punt from you. Yeah. This well, isn't a good talk. We'll get to that later. <laughs> My uh, number five is Diddle Diddle Dumpling. Empty Orchestra. Oh, no. Uh, where's Diddle Diddle Dumpling for you? Four. All right, let's do, let's do, we'll go chronologically, seeing as we've, Four and five, we've both got um, in different slots. Uh, so chronologically, Empty Orchestra came out first. Um, so this is my this is my four. This is your five. Um, you were you were always quite sour on this one. I thought I was. I didn't get it when it first came out, or, uh, because it doesn't really have a. Because this is, I've now finished half of season two awaiting a big season three, which had a lot of big twists in. And then this follows my favourite episode. And it's not really got that much of a twist. No, yeah. um, Yeah. Well, it doesn't have one one in the grandiose sense. Uh, uh, On the audio commentary, they kept saying there were drafts of the script where it was revealed that this was purgatory or hell or some sort of variation on that. But overall, it just got dropped. Uh, in favour of just a more realistic, um, yeah. nice uh, episode. And I think we've sort of had this thing, this with uh, Love's Great Adventure uh, uh, in I, season yeah. five, which um, we'll get which to is eventually. Fantastic. Yeah, which is a beautiful, beautiful episode. But you sort of get lulled into um, expecting something an awful lot bigger. Yeah. It's, um, um, which it's is their attempt at just doing a nice character study, yeah. I suppose. But sometimes it doesn't work in the, the format that they've set out for the show. Yes. Uh, so, yes, we've got a great cast in this. We've got Tamsin Althwaite. We've got Sarah Hadland, who I've met. Um, we've got uh, Rebecca Hines as Chantel. Uh, Javon Prince as Dwayne. Emily Howlett as Janet. Um, it, yeah, no, an incredible, uh, great cast. Great soundtrack. Can you, here you go. Can you name every song that is heard, that is done? Oh, here we go. Um, right, so we've got... Which is called... 
Saturday night. Saturday night is yep. great. Yeah, <laughs> that's one. Um, well, no, that's number. That's number two. I say I'm I'm out of order. It starts. Yeah, You're out of order. <laughs> <laughs> You've got Norfolk's maddest match. That was another. Um, <laughs> I know it begins with the uh, um, "Don't You Want Me, Baby." It sure does. Right. Which is the only song that has appeared in two Inside Number Nine episodes. What's the other Inside Number Nine episode it's appeared in? Um, oh, 12 Days of Christine? It's Nana's Party when they changed the track from uh, the soundtrack to the mission to Do What You Want Me. Um, yes, so you've got the first two. You've got f- um, five left. Five? Um, one, two, three, oh, no. four, five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, Oh, we've got Wham Rap. Wham Rap, enjoy what you do, the best <laughs> song. <laughs> One of the best raps ever written. <laughs> give a, uh, sorry, give a wham, give a bam, but don't give a damn. <laughs> what a lyric. Incredible. And, yep, yeah, uh, four left. You're still in um, order. You're still in order. I, I'm still in order. This is good. This is good. Um, well, no, you, you've, you've gone back to order. Um, da, 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 da. I can't take it. <laughs> the great. Problem. What's the song called? Oh, it's um, since you've been gone. Since you've been gone by Rainbow. Three left. Oh, here we go. Um, um, it's the duet uh, now d- between Sarah Hadland and Thames in Outwait. Uh, it must have been love. No, I know no. so well. Oh, come on. Wasn't it good? So good. Wasn't it bad? bad. Written by which famous singing, uh, singing, uh, famous songwriters? The Bee Gees. No. Upper. Benny and Bjorn. Yeah, Benny and Bjorn. Benny and Bjorn wrote Chess with Tim Rice. Yeah. And then the song that uh, Emily Howlett sings. This one I've forgotten. Only You by Yazoo. Looking from a window above. It's uh, like so you've been story. very careful there. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Skips the impression. And uh, finally, we end with. Oh, oh, the. Uh, this, yeah, this is my nitpick of the whole episode. Um, <laughs> bulletproof. Titanium. Uh, by <laughs> Sia and David Getter and Afro Jack. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, I've, I've come to I've come to like. Well, I don't listen to the song on its own. I like the song yeah. in the episode. Um, again, I, wish, I don't. I wish they no. picked another song. I'm, you know, I'm I wish they picked fashion. a worse singer. They've oh. clearly just got a very very good singer who does like uh, pub nights and, and little uh, gigs, and they've got her in for the final. And it's too polished. On it's, the commentary they do say that they just had a bunch of extras and they hadn't cast and then they just said who wants to sing it so clearly yeah but clearly you are right she is a singer in her own right or something and she was like well it's my i can do it um yeah i don't again i don't mind it it's a nice triumphant ending you've got the nice little change of the lights and the reveal the glow in the dark got um, steve's odd brush your shoulder dance brush your shoulder dance (laughs) not your earphone out dance um, yeah, no, everybody gets a happy ending. Well, no, not everybody. The two no. adulterers, uh, Greg and Connie, don't. Uh, but Fran does, Sarah Hadland, my good friend. <laughs> 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 when I met her, I said, uh, I thought you were wonderful in the Inside Number Nine episode because I didn't want to say Empty Orchestra because I didn't want to think I was a psycho fan. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were wonderful in Empty Orchestra season three, episode four. <laughs> um, and she said, yeah, no, they're brilliant, aren't they? So even she likes them. Hey. Obviously, obviously, she likes them. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Yeah, no, I, I, first time watching this, again, a little bit deflated, but now it's one of my, it's a nice go-to happy party episode. And also, this is one of the ones that I do show people first. I knew you were saying, you you do Sphinx. What do you do? Uh, Sphinx cold comfort <laughs> sardines. Uh... I believe so. I might, I think I might have recently thrown in there 
uh, to have and to hold. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah. Um, but I usually throw orchestra in. It's just a nice little. It's a nice, a nice one. fun episode. And also, if they watch that one first, then they don't fall into the trap of expecting a expecting a big thing. Uh, yeah, no, wonderful episode. Uh, do you know why it's called Empty Orchestra, Will? Oh, um, is it because um, there's not an orchestra, it's a backing track? I don't know. It's it's karaoke bar. That's what um, the Japanese word for empty orchestra is karaoke. Oh, I like that. And that's why it's called they're, karaoke. They're clever, aren't they? They're very clever. Yes, very good. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, no, any other thoughts on MTL for sure? Um, yeah, it's it's great. The one rap's great. I, mean, um, rap. I do get annoyed because they use the single version, uh, so some of the lyrics are different for a diehard Wham fan, uh, like, <laughs> like myself, who knows all the words to the six and a half minute proper Wham rap. I like the, the build up of. You thinking that someone's going to get fired? Yeah, uh, that's a nice twist. That is, that's the twist in a way. I like the um, since you've been gone part where I've got a plan, and then we don't hear it, and then yeah. <laughs> after he's downed like twenty shots of yeah, vodka, he's doing, he's doing he's, well, isn't he? He's done a, a you in Adam's family. He's he's got the tie around his head. Oh, I thought you were saying getting pissed. <laughs> that was oh. me in the footloose. And b- both, really. I, I was, I was quite yeah. jolly. In between, but you had to can, be to enjoy it. I can, yeah, I could, I, I can stick it famously. I was, uh, it excelled uh, my performance. It definitely excelled. Uh, you know what a great, what a great show. Um, what's your favourite <laughs> costume? Um, I don't want to say the sumo wrestler because that's obvious. It's always funny, isn't it? Uh, but it's great. Um, uh, I, I do like the boy George. That's great. Yeah, boy George is good. Then she's put some effort into it. Yeah, she's really put some effort into it. Oh, I I do really like the whole um, hill roulette thing. That's fun. Yeah, do, that's that big bit of like prees. Oh, are you into Pre- LSD now? No, uh, <laughs> into laxatives. Yeah, but it's fake, isn't it? It's all placebo. Yeah. Oh, oh, don't give it away. What do you mean, That's don't just... give it away? We've ruined every episode. This is a fully <laughs> spoiled, <laughs> fully spoiled thing. Right, let's move on then to, uh, where, uh, yeah, Diddle Diddle Dumpling is your four, my five. Yeah. Um, the wonderful Keely Hawes, the wonderful Matthew Bainton, and obviously Stephen Reese again. Um, but a darker, a darker episode. Oof. Darker. It's more troublesome. It has one of my best, um, it has one of my favourite subtle lines of, you know, where they give something away, which is, um, well, a hymn is like um, what you sing at a funeral. Oh, oh no, sorry, the kid says like oh, at a funeral, yeah. doesn't she? And then the mother goes, well done. Yeah. Yes. Um, the wonderful Keely Hawes, who is exceptional in this, oh. as Louise. Um, Cast her in anything. <laughs> yes, yeah, do. Yeah, no, you can't beat Keely. Um, and then there's the other woman who was in Patrick Melrose, Melrose, who I call not Keely Hawes, but she looks exactly like Keely Hawes. Yeah. And it's like a toss up between which one <laughs> is in which thing. <laughs> and you're like, wait, is that. Yeah, but was she in Keely Hawes? Was she? Uh, oh no, no, that's that's not Keely Horse. <laughs> who's in? Um, who's in the? What's the Greek one? The Durrells. Who's in the Durrells? Oh, that's Keely Horse. Or is it not Keely? No, no, that's Keely Horse. Um, yes, no. A- again, directed by the wonderful Gwilym uh, Morales. Uh, the first sort of twist on the nine, the reveal of the shoe. Yeah, I like wonderful that. It zooms in. That's great. That's very good. That was very good for it. For a, for a completist watching them all in order, yeah. That was a instead of out of order. That was a wonderful uh, reveal when I first saw it. As you think, what's going on here? What's, what's... Hello, what's happening? <laughs> is this um, inside number nine. Yes, I know that you're a big. Cla- uh, I mean, we both like classical music. I think you you more so perhaps. You're a big fan of the Vivaldi Four Seasons. Four se- um, yes, passing of I was the seasons. 
I grew up with uh, with this um, collection of songs. Um, my old primary school, uh, the head teacher, we always walked in on. Uh, it was either Beethoven or Vivaldi, hmm. and it was the Four Seasons. And depending on what season it was, the play that season. Uh, and at the beginning, just before every, we'd go, "Good morning, everybody." In that weird sarcastic tone. Oh yeah, the, every yeah. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Good yeah. morning, Mrs. Sampson. And then um, the head teacher would just pick out on the spot a random child, be like, "Who's this written by?" <laughs> and every every time you're like, oh, "Shit, is it is it Vivaldi or is it Beethoven?" And you've got to make your mind up because it was always one of the other. Classical music, fifty-fifty. <laughs> Every single assembly, a child got asked, who wrote this? <laughs> it's very funny. Um, I never got asked myself. Uh, I once thought I did. Uh, she pointed at someone and went, William. Uh, but it was another William behind me, and I embarrassed myself and uh, went, Get out of there! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Tommy! Uh... <laughs> oh, what's your favourite what, scene in this? I, I've, I mean... It's the... I mean, there's two. There's, there's, there's two. It's <laughs> got you. Um, it's... Rest in peace, Caroline. <laughs> oh. I like the uh, the bit where he's got the, the drawing and he's like, it's a black man's shoe, but it could belong to a black man. But I oh, also very that's much... Good. I, that's I like good. That's a good three, yeah. When she comes back home from school and she says, Mummy, Mummy, Daddy, can I show you my play? And she is, she sings diddle diddle thing, and you just see him inside just crack. That's a that's, great. That's good. But then they weren't the two nominations that came to my head. My two nominations oh. are um, Matthew Bainton coming, and the whole. <laughs> Can I see number three again? <laughs> that just the the rigor that he has given uh, to this <laughs> like, task, yeah, correct, correct, as well correct. as. Um, the scene with with Steve, uh, where well, when you think they're having an affair, well, they are having an affair. Oh, they are. There was a deleted scene um, that didn't make it. I, I keep listening to all these commentaries and stuff, and they keep mentioning deleted scenes. Why aren't they on any discs? <laughs> Die to see them. Um, but uh, yeah, no, they are they are having an affair. Um, but in the episode, I guess it's still subtle. But there was a deleted scene. Um, yeah, no, the reveal when they do the whole magic thing, which we'll yeah. do. We're doing magic eventually with um, Anthony Hopkins, but he's a ventriloquist and uh, he's he's nutty basically. And uh, they go, let don't let fats talk for five minutes. And uh, they fully admit to this on the commentary. They just said, well, this was our chance to do the magic scene. <laughs> um, where Don't let fats talk. Oh, that's that. As much as I adore Sounds of Lambs, that five minutes is the best Anthony Hopkins has ever acted. I'm very excited for you to see it. Um, I, I can't wait. Yes. And then we've got, um, yeah, no, the marvellous, uh, oh, Christ on a bike. Um, yeah, no, that, that scene. Yep. What's different about the hair this this episode? There's two. There's two of because them. Because they decided to do Wes Anderson. To Although match they do all that the symmetry of the yeah. two children, the two shoes, the two martinis. Uh, yeah, it's very very good. It's very very good. Um, bloody hell! What's happening? There we are. Uh, sorry. Uh, right. Have we got any? Have you got anything else to say on diddle diddle dumpling? I like the ambiguous ending because you know he's obviously yeah. killed uh, Matthew Bainton's character, mm -hmm. but has he killed the daughter as well? That's well, that's what the we thing. Don't know. I thought it was leading to that. I don't think he has killed. He hasn't killed the daughter. I've never thought that. I thought that it was always a rather obvious. You think he's? I think it was all leading to he's killed the daughter, mm. and then it's oh no, he's killed Matthew Bainton. I don't know. I mean, that's one way. It's definitely a darker way to read it. Yeah. I do love the, yeah, no, the final, when he's got the two babies. And then, his and then the CCTV footage yeah. of him just putting the shoe down. The that's shoe great. There. Oh, poor Reese. 
Poor Reese. That's it. He, he, he goes through a lot, doesn't he? There's a lot of stuff's happened to him. Poor Reese. That David. time he was. There we go. Uh, okay, my number three is yeah. The Devil of Christmas. The Bill. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to get one in order. I don't think we are. My number two is The Bill. Um, okay, my so number we'll, do, we'll go chronologically. Yeah, my number two is Devil of Christmas. Yeah, and then, yeah. well, we know what our <laughs> six and ones are. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Uh, right, okay, let's do chronologically again. The Devil of Christmas. Um, yeah, my, my... Actually, scrap that. My number two is The Devil of Christmas. Hey! And my number three is The Bill. Uh, just looking at these IMDb images, yeah. So we've got we've got some in common. Well, uh, yeah. No, devil, devil at two. So let's do the bill instead. Now firmly at our number three position. Um, well, as you can, I, I, I obviously adore the thing because it was nearly my number two. Um, yeah, Philip Glenister, Jason Watkins, and Ellie White um, starts off. Rather regular, just an argument over a bill. You're back. Hello. Uh, where did we? Where did you cut off? Um, just when you changed your mind. Okay. So. Let's go with the bill then at now firmly at our number three. I, I, again, I, I love it. It was very nearly my number two. Philip Glenister, Jason Watkins and Ellie White as Anya. What starts off as a very regular argument over a bill quickly devolves into something a little bit more diabolical. Um, Will. Yes. Uh, oh, it's it's great. It's got some of the... It's a great series opener as well. They're very good at series openers. Well, it depends. Um, oh, well, no. Devil of... Yeah. Mm, scrap that. Devil of Christmas is a great series opener. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's got some great lines. Um, I like the whole language barrier. And he's like, uh, it's a liqueur. Liqueur what? That's great. Uh, oh, no, she's going to bring back a lemon and a cello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, no, I, actually, I might switch them again. No, I'm not going to switch them again, because I'll, I'll, it'll only end up at three uh, when we do the rankings anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, just non-stop great lines in this. I love the back and forth. I think this might be their best written episode of the season, um, because as, as, as clever as Sphinx is, um, I think the, the wit is better mm. placed here. And it's... It's very fast paced. It, it's always Brilliant. claustrophobic. It's mm. you're, you're out of breath. Yeah. You have no idea what's going to happen next. Uh, keeps building, keeps building. A great twist that pays off. Um, yeah, no, you, you. What, what, what does he say when he when he comes back in? You dirty lime bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. That might be my favourite moment of the season. Uh, <laughs> um, I think, yeah, no, Philip Glenister's excellent in this. I really like Jason Watkins. Yeah. When he brings out his coupon. <laughs> I got 25%. Oh, get that. Ebenezer, get your coat. We don't want your shrapnel, that's Ebenezer. That's another reason why I love this. It's so Yorkshire. It like, is. It's yes. very relatable. We've all been in a conversation. Like, we've gone with, like, his dad and his mate uh, like, yeah. to the pub, and you hear a conversation like this. I've heard, uh, yeah, shrap, shrapnel, Ebenezer, uh, uh, <laughs> what was it, blue, blue, uh, blue cock, tight-fisted wanker. Uh, piss mints I used before this, and then this just solidified it. I've never not called them <laughs> piss mints since. Uh, to the extent that a teacher, I referred to them as piss mints, and the teacher said, isn't that from Inside Nam and I? And I said, well, no, we, we, we call it piss mints anyway, but uh, I, I do <laughs> call them. Yeah, I do love Inside Nam and I. Um, where do you sit on the tw where do you sit on the final on the sorry on the final ten minute twist of that it was all a rigged thing and it was all a plan? I like it, but then it just goes on for too long. Um, I, I I do like the fact that she, oh she wasn't dead oh that, yeah all that 
But then the whole, oh, now you're still going to have to pay us. What comp the compromise is silly. Um, I, I, I think that, that last bit just goes on for too long or it needs something else. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've always... I like the reveal that Kevin's the one in control, that Jason yeah. Watkins is the, the, the secret governor. Evil genius, yeah. Uh, that's great. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think the whole... And if also if they're going to bring, he clearly doesn't need to be brought in because uh, he's got all this money anyway. So he doesn't need the money to be robbed from these people. Um, either you do, I again, I'm not saying I'm better. Just have the twist be, I don't have any money anyway. I'm bankrupt. Mm. And then, all right, well, you need to still pay us back. And then you've got the thing of, okay, well, Philip Lannister's now doing it because he needs yeah. money also. So... You're suddenly that rather yeah. than the whole oh we need someone to clean it up or yeah um but again it's still a excellent Stella. excellent episode a group of friends go out for tapas after a day of golfing but tempers escalate quickly when they can't agree on how to settle the bill who will pay the ultimate price what's your favorite tapas dish i love garlic prawns don't i oh very good I like a fish taco. Don't like tacos. Do you like tortillas? Wraps? I like a fajita. I know that it's like a one, one oh, step no. beyond. Soft shell fish taco. One step beyond. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, let's, before we go into our, Oof. whatever, our, kind of top three let's hit up some categories will your favorite location this week uh it's empty orchestra for me i really yeah. like that as a I've, I've always wanted nice. to go to a karaoke booth yeah i, I we should you, do it you, yeah i love I, I whoever came up with the idea of a karaoke i mean it was the japanese because that's how they always used to do it whoever came up with karaoke booths it's genius what's the thing that people don't like about karaoke doing it in front of people you know i i you know, I finally get a girl who likes karaoke. Oh, we'll do a karaoke booth. And then <coughs> she's gone. So we ne and then we never, got, we never got to go karaoke. So, um, yeah, no. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll get that penciled in. Whenever, yeah. uh, that karaoke booths, I'll tell you this for free, might be the only one of the first uh, sports Things to, to reopen. Do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be, wouldn't it? Because it's not like a big public space. I we might. should start a campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Open the karaoke booth. Open the karaoke booth. <laughs> now, now, now. Uh, yes, okay. My favourite location. Hmm. I think it's, again, I mean, the, the actual answer is obviously Diddle Diddle Dumpling. That's an incredible house. I would love to live in that yep. house. But... Um, I do love a nice restaurant. I mean, this quarantine has only led me to like that, <laughs> e want that even more. I do want to... Yeah. This is why you need to start setting up some more double dates, because I want long dinners and then a nice little oh. thing about the bill. Like, oh, we'll get the next one. Very nice. Nice couple of nice That's bottles of red wine. Co conversation over a, a nice meal, some wine. It's, you can't beat it, A couple can of you? nice bottles of red wine, then liqueurs. <laughs> lick your what? Lick your what? And then if it's in Wakefield or whatever, maybe have a nice drink out. Oh, yeah. maybe go to Leeds. That's yeah, it well, pushing it. Yeah, oh. we're going crazy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice, just a nice long meal. That's what I want. Yeah. Uh, but private view. I do love private. Well, we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> uh, best, best hair. I, I've discounted diddle. Because that's okay. Uh, all right. Too yeah. much. Too much of one thing is a cannot. Isn't always a good thing. Do you know what? Um, do you know what Liberace said? What? More? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> do you know what Liberace said? <laughs> too much of a good thing is wonderful. <laughs> that's oh, true. rest in peace. Yes, rest in peace, Liberace. Um, um, I I'm not a fan of it being hidden in the photograph in empty orchestra. Or is it on the phone screen? No, it's in the photograph. In the, in the photograph. With his, with the, with his ex, yeah. Mm. Um, why not? That's the only way that you can do it. Yeah, but 
it's compared to the others, if we're choosing best hair. That's true. I, um, but it's, Riddle of the Sphinx, it's barely visible on the mm. commentary. They say, yeah, it's supposed to be there. We're supposed to have a, another shot, but we ran out of time. And the hair's not the most important thing in an episode, unfortunately. Uh, so Sphinx is uh, removed. Private view, with it being on that cardboard box, it's a bit sneaky. It's a bit sneaky. It is. I mean, I don't know why they didn't do the most obvious thing, which is to, to have a, as an art exhibit that they walk past. Well, in, in like a glass box? Yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. Well, anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go... I might go Diddle Diddle Dumpling, actually. Oh, all right, okay. It's a nice... I think it's a nice uh, change that links beautifully to the episode. And now However, we know that I they do have like two the bills. Yeah. However, I do like the bill... When, when it's just the first second and it just goes past. And you're like, yeah. oh, blink and you miss it. Hey. Very good. Sorry, did you pick one? I, I've gone Bill. Mm. Yeah. Best cast. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's... A t it's uh, well, no. Oh, ooh, this is a tough one, actually. Because Bill's exceptional, even if mm. it's just five. Empty Orchestra is exceptional. I think I'm going to have to go private view. I think that it's leaning into the whole Agatha Christie uh, 10, you know, yeah. get 12 famous actors, that whole, and then there were none, 10 Little Indians yeah. sort of thing. Um, and so it, it, and obviously you got Peter Kay. Uh, uh, I'll, get, I'll get back to that when we do private view. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Um, best guest, best single guest. Philip Lannister. Wouldn't you, don't you think Jason Watkins steals that, steals mm, that one? He does, he does. But I, I, all I've been repeating all week is, Not Anushka, Anushka. Oh, <laughs> that is good. Then, no. That's great. We should do a, a full parody version of Babushka. By Kate Bush. <laughs> oh, I'm all yours. Anushka, Anushka. Anushka, yada, yada. Um, I do love Rula, Rula Lenska in The Devil of Christmas. Mm. And I also like um, Jessica Rain in uh, The Devil of Christmas. Uh, however, I like I, Del, De, uh, Derek Jacobi. I, I love Derek Jacobi. <laughs> I'd have to, I'm going to have to give some lip service to my grandmother and say Felicity Kendall as Patricia in uh, Private View because my grandma looks like Felicity looks Kendall just like and is called Patricia. Uh, so, <laughs> and also she's great in it. Uh, <laughs> Weren't you in BB-8? <laughs> I'm <laughs> deaf, not... I'm blind, not deaf. <laughs> but we'll get to Felicity Kendall uh, in our worst episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, best Reese. I diddle diddle. Yeah, that's the genuine best performance. Yeah. Um, best Steve. Bill's very good. However, I love him in Devil of Christmas. Like that great. shower shot when he's like, <laughs> when he's <laughs> suddenly dry. <laughs> yeah. As, uh, Julian. Uh, well, I, that's his character's name, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Wouldn't you pick Steve for Riddle of the Sphinx? Um, no, because it's just a very, it's a Steve performance. He's, it's not very different to say, oh, it, that's a special mention. Whereas in, I suppose Reese, but Reese is exceptional in that. But you can, you can see Steve doing that all day long. a moment. Yeah. I want you to eat her. Um, very good. Right then, speaking of the devil of Christmas. Their first Christmas special, uh, not their not their last uh, special. Uh, we obviously have the Halloween special. Um, I think we were both a bit annoyed that Love's Greatest Ad Love's Great Adventure wasn't a Christmas special. It felt rather naughty watching a Christmas themed episode in March. It was strange, but then again, they had a lot of trouble filming that series. Yes, so they could release it whenever they wanted. I'll give them benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And also, you've got the Hall they had the Halloween special. Can you do two specials back-to-back -back without an actual yeah. season? 
I guess it's not wholly about Christmas, obviously. Uh, you know, there's, you're not got, it's not gratuitous, let's say, in its Christmas nature. Um, it's, Christmas isn't, no. Part of the, which is also just, the same with Devil of Christmas. This is one of those Christmas yeah. specials that I watch all year round. Um, yeah. Go on, what are the Christmas movies that you ignore and watch all year round? Die Hard. Yeah. Gremlins. Yeah. Uh, the Polar Express. You watch the Polar Express that was more a, than that once was a, a year? That was a joke. It's not a joke, though, is it? It's your favourite Christmas film. <laughs> oh. It's not. I watched it a lot in December. It's great. It feels so Christmassy. Um, what are the Christmas themes? Movies are there that you can get away with? Eyes wide shut. <laughs> I watch Eyes wide shut more than once a year. Uh, right, <laughs> yes, The Devil of Christmas, directed by Graham Harper. Uh, a director talks about his old horror film. It's Austria, Krampusnacht, December 1977. The Devonshires arrive at the Alpine Chalet for a holiday. The caretaker, Klaus, tells them about a local legend of Krampus, the Devil of Christmas. Actually, that it's might be great. my sneaky favourite, Reese. <laughs> <laughs> As Klaus. And then, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> That's great. I'm Grampus. <laughs> I've got, he wasn't very good, unfortunately. Sticks, uh, the little boy. <laughs> he wasn't very good. Uh, what's the name of the, uh, what's the name of Derek Jacobi's director character? Oh my D F uh, D F D F. Um, is it you, is it a? You know when you drop a biscuit. Ugh. Oh, when you take what? Oh, oh no! I brought a spoon to get the rest. <laughs> oh no! Not I was going to say Derek Jacobi, but that's DJ. <laughs> Dennis Fulcher. Is that based on the? Uh, who is it? Who is it meant to be? Who is it meant to be? It's just those old 70s. No. Yeah. You know, they used to direct Rivets. Tenet. To... <laughs> no, I was just going to say <laughs> old BBC sort of, you know, good old fashioned 10 episodes, shoot them all a week, you know, get them done. Yeah. Get them done, uh, directors. Yes. Uh, Ruler Lenster, obviously very well versed in this. Um, Oh, she was in a, oh, 25 episodes? Oh, it was a game show. Oh my God, well, this looks fantastic. Cluedo, it ran for yeah. three years. A unique game show in which celebrities tried to deduce which of the classic characters committed a murder by watching a short film and interviewing the suspects. That sounds great. Do you want to know who the host was? Yeah. Richard Maidley. <laughs> <laughs> um, who, um, who's becoming Alan Partridge? Yeah, becoming. He's been <laughs> Alan He <Partridge>. is. <laughs> uh, Colonel Mustard was always played by Leslie Grantham. Um, yeah, Ruler Lenska always played Mrs. Peacock. Uh, Tom Baker always played Professor Plum. Oh, brilliant. Uh, not always, I tell a lie. He was uh, replaced by David McCallum. Christopher Biggins played Reverend Green. Jerry <laughs> Hall played Miss Scarlet. Uh, this Jonah Lovely great. played Mrs. Peacock. Pam Farris played Miss White. Richard Wilson played Reverend Green. This is <laughs> this might be <laughs> the best TV show I've ever... Uh, Toya Wilcox played uh, Miss Scarlet. I, 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 I could just go on for hours. Neil Morrissey. Um, one of the great guest stars of the run. Uh, you know, this is, this is genuinely terrific. And then we'll Google an episode and find that it's the worst series ever made. <laughs> um, and Keith Chegwin as studio guest. <laughs> but just Keith on his own. Just Keith on his own. He's a repeat guest. Um, I think we're agreed. Well, it depends how you want to rank deadline. I think we're agreed that this is the scariest 30 seconds they've ever done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. If we're talking repeat watch, Deadline loses some of its effect. Devil I, I, Christmas I'll, never loses its effect. I put to having to hold up there as well. Mm, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just desensitised, but to having to hold's never unsettled me. I mean, it's deeply unsettling. It's horrifying. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's never... harder. But the end of yeah, with the it's. I'd so agree. I don't think I'll watch the rest. Brilliant. Wow. Brilliant stuff. The reason why this episode's so good, it's because they fully embrace the really bad, cheesy 70s. Oh, the Hammer House of Horror, yeah. Because they, uh, they love it. This is what they grew up on. Yeah. This is the influence for the show. And they Jessica got Rain to fully lean has into it. got it to a T. She's exceptional but, in this oh, episode. Oh my, my, my <gasps> Julian! I'm scared. Julian! <laughs> Julian! Yeah, and also... <laughs> The tw- the twist really works. Maybe I'm yeah. stupid, but the first time you think, oh yeah, no, she's getting rid of the pills because she doesn't want to yeah. take her medication anymore because she's a no, crazy woman. A, slap her. It's <laughs> a bad baby because it's an affair baby. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you sound like uh, Brass Eye Chris Morris when he goes uh, when he's talking to that gay man and he's like, wait, you're gay. You've got bad AIDS. You've got the bad AIDS. <laughs> oh no. And everybody starts booing him in the audience. Brilliant satire. I like, oh, what's my favorite? I, uh, when he rings up that corner shop and he's, he's on about tennis. That's a very good... You need two bottles of that. Brass Eye, we'll, we will get to. I <laughs> love Brass Eye. I am. <laughs> the, the pedophiles on Channel 4. I've hunted pedophiles. I've found them. I should know. I was one, for God's sake. <laughs> That's the reason why it, like, it died. Oh, yeah, episode. yeah. Yeah. It was one of the most controversial <laughs> television episodes of <laughs> all time, and it was in the late 90s. I mean, they had to cut the Peter Sutcliffe musical gag because uh, they just couldn't get it to air. Peter Sutcliffe doing a musical of his life. <laughs> it sounds like something we do at college. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really am very, truly sorry. Bang. Uh, it's great stuff. Um, love me, love me. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, another terrifying moment in this is the um, where the thunder flashes and he's in the background, and it's and even though it's just a shitty oh, yeah. mask, yeah. shits myself. That's, yeah, brilliant stuff. Uh, yeah, now as you say, they fully lead into it. It was filmed using genuine equipment from the seventies. Brilliant, uh, evident from you know all the all the stuff that you can see in it, and obviously that was a big pain, but pays off. Incredible. Very well. I love the the dinner scene where yeah. it's true. Eating <laughs> well, scenes eat and everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then when he's he's speeding up all of his lines. I think he had an advert uh, that night. <laughs> oh, it's great stuff. Uh, anything else to say about the Devil of Christmas? Amazing. Very, Amazing. very good. Amazing. Right, here we go. <laughs> oh, no. This is, is this the first time your number six has been nine, my number one and vice oh, it's versa? It's definitely that, yeah, no, without a shadow yeah. of doubt, it's the first time, yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> um, right, okay. And also, seeing as we've both got Devil at Christmas at two and the Bill at three, that means that they're locked in already. So yeah. one of these episodes is going to be number one and the other's going to be four. No, so it's not I looking like it. good. <laughs> um, right, okay. So I guess we'll go chronologically. Uh, Riddle of the Sphinx. Will oh, yes. take us away. It's my favourite inside case. number nine. Think about <laughs> I, it that I will. Way. It's my favourite inside number nine episode of all time so far. Uh, it's, I hope they just make oh, many man. more. <laughs> the worst day of your life so far. What a great um, they are making many more. Well, after this is all done with, yeah, no, they've been They're up for, for two, s- two more, yeah. Yeah, six and seven, yeah. Um, it's just the reason I love this episode so much is it's very clever. It's very, very clever. Um, I, I love words. I think the, basing it around a whole cryptic, <laughs> I love words. Basing it, the episode around a cryptic crossword is very clever. Um, and I like how he predicts what's going to happen, so then the crossword is linked to the plot. Um, I think I, 
I know exactly why you're not a fan of it. <laughs> or, well, not a fan of it, like it less. Yeah. Is it, is it the twist at the end? No, they're not my children. They're yours. Is it that one? No, that's all oh. the stuff I love. I oh. love all the politi- the relationship politics that's between great. three people. And I love the Lecter-like oh, evil Oh, I want twist. you to eat her. That's yeah. a great bit. That's, love that's all the that. biggest twist of it. Yeah. I, I just, I think it's a bit, all the crossword stuff is too clever for its own good. There is no conceivable, it, and there's, what, they all did a pass at the crossword. She knew that he was going to write asphyxiation, but also she, he knew that he was going to write this, and it all links in with the thing, and then it all ends with RIP and HS. It is exceptionally clever, but removes all types of any sort of realism from it. There is literally, how could every plot beat, somebody goes up, asphyxiation, <gasps> puffer fish, uh, something else. Because they use the crossword as a narrative device. That's why. Yes, but that doesn't make any sense because he wrote it all. Yeah. Squires wrote it all. He didn't know that he was going to get asphyxi. Uh, no. He didn't know he was going to get... Um, uh, it's it's when gonna... it's when what do you call it? Yeah. Like she's she R. joins in. Yeah, I wa- all right, I watched this this morning. She joins in. She suddenly just notices asphyxiation because he's obviously he knows that she was going to try and do the puffer fish. So yeah. that's why he swap cups. So then she goes, "Oh my god, he's clever. He's predicted this. Let's use asphyxiation and be all clever." I that's swapped why. cups. That's the one that really annoys me. Oh, I know oh, no. that because how does he know that he's going to put it in a cup? And I know that he's got the leak from Tyler, and I know that that it's great. It's, it's still very good. <sighs> Rip NHS. That's I don't fine. Like that. No, that's fine by me because that seems <laughs> coincidental. That's that absolutely is fine. Yeah, because he's like, oh, very. Oh, your name's Hector, isn't it? How very odd. That's purely coincidental. That's fine by me. And it's a nice little end. But everything else... It's great. I, but for months after watching this episode, I tried to do cryptic crosswords. I still haven't uh, <laughs> succeeded. You, you could have done this one because the crossword that appears in the episode featured in the Guardian newspaper and all the questions were written by Steve Pennington himself. Yay. Uh, yes. I love the the dialogue as well. It's very good. Like it, it keeps its realism because um, there's the flat and what's pink and hard in the morning, a cock. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it's the classic good. gags that they're always good at, and that liven and make and separate them from any other writer, the writers that um, are current. But also, yeah, no, it's just. Uh, I think it is too clever for its own liking. It's why interesting it's, you've it's, chosen a private view then for your. For your that's phone. not clever at all. It's anyway. We'll get to that next. It's <laughs> why it's why I've distinctly dropped off Sherlock, sort of from halfway through season three onwards. Was that those season four episodes? Not the Toby Jones one. I didn't mind that one, but the bloody his sister one and the first one were borderline insufferable just because i just kept thinking about the those first two seasons and just how as well i say realistic but just how down to not down to earth but whatever you know what i'm trying to say how yeah if you could if you thought about it even if you weren't sherlock you could be like okay right let's figure it out yeah and you that's that's it you could figure it out as an audience if you're watching clever enough. The, the best one is that Phil Daniels um, taxi driver one. I noticed the taxi driver the first time I watched it. I was like, wait a minute, another taxi driver. Okay, uh, maybe it's the taxi driver. Obviously didn't know any of this pill business or that he was risking it himself. But I was like, okay, that's a really good episode that I could have figured out myself, yeah. but I'm not clever enough. And then on repeat watches that makes it even better. Season then, four, episode three, 
all the bloody traps that she was setting it bloody no chance but then that, that's why i love riddle of the sphinx because it's very very clever and mm. it throws all of these very clever crossword clues at you and you're like oh oh i like that that's clever i couldn't have done that because yeah. i think that's it's a show-off episode of, the, of how clever oh, they yeah. actually are as writers and I love it. That's why I love it. I do love it. I, as I say, this is probably my favourite. Um, yeah, no, I, I, as I say, I do adore this episode. Uh, yes. However, it is my number six. And my number one is Private View. I'm not going to make my case just yet. I want to hear similarly... Um, I, I, I don't know why you dislike this one. Uh, it's, it was a disappointing end to the series. Um, I, I think on an unrelated note, this doesn't have to affect why I dislike it, but I think that Pardon they me. could have used... <coughs> bless you. Uh, they could have used a lot more Peter K. No, I, it's I'm... the psycho twist. It's the but psycho. That, but, okay. But... Um, I, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Felicity Kendall in this episode. <laughs> no, this is bad. Um, I'm not. I, I you don't I, like uh, Carrie, the, the the Big Brother one. I I really don't like Morgana Robinson. Yeah. Um, she's what she's in Toast as well. She's in a. She she's, crops up in a few things. Yeah, I don't. I I'm not a fan. Not a fan of her. She's um, going to be in the Witches, the Robert Zemeckis Witches. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. I hope she's an extra. <laughs> <laughs> she's Mrs. Jenkins. I don't know who. Oh, I think that's his mum. Oh. We'll never know. Is it? Um, do we know if that's going to be like weirdo Robert Zemeckis face as stuff? Or is it going to be um, more great makeup again? I'm hoping it's great makeup. I hope it's terrifying as the first one. That because that's a scary that film. Ni Nicholas yeah. Rogue. We we're going to do Don't Look Now. One of the you know scariest, you know most perverse erotic thrillers of all time. And then he directs The Witches, and I don't think he changes his style that much to say it's a kids <laughs> film. <laughs> It's like when Joe Pesci did Home Alone just yeah. after doing Goodfellas. <laughs> they must have been terrified. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, as you, as you were, as you were, about the things that you don't like. Um, private, it's... I like, I like how they're bonked off, but I kind of don't... I, I do really like the twist that at the end. Um, Fiona Shaw. He, he, mm, no. Nah. Oh, you don't Fiona. like Fiona Shaw? She, no, she's fine in it. Do you but, not love uh, that final thing? She, the final, oh, it's a great. She's great. You took my son's liver and then you drank. That's it's fine. But that I, I, I the thing I do really like. was a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, that's up there with my favourite Steve character. That's great. Health and safety. Kenneth Williams. Um, <laughs> um, I, I really like the payoff of how they interview Reese at the end. He's like, mm, I got out of it. That's it. That's the yeah, best. I nearly bit. put my. It's 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 like you've really put your heart and soul and heart your whole heart into this uh, exhibit, <laughs> almost. <laughs> I, I, I I I love it. As a as a fan of art myself, it's it's not the best. Yeah, it's modern art, isn't it? It is modern art. They say on is... the commentary, they say, um, <laughs> they say, I don't want to dismiss all of modern art, but it's, it's uh, a lot easier uh, to, we don't want to say that you can throw a bunch of junk around, but when you're making a whole set in a week, uh, less than a week and shooting it, it's a little bit easier when it's modern art. Uh, saying that though, some of those mannequins are absolutely terrifying. But that, that scene where it, it was in the, the trailer of... Um, yes, I remember seeing that image of... Um, I was... Yeah. I was also disappointed by that because I thought that could have been an episode on its own, like seeing Steve in this room of like hanging bits of legs. That was, yeah. That's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Flynn has a nice little cameo as uh, Elliot Quinn, the uh, 
obviously he's gone on to bigger and uh, better things. He's uh, quite a... I, I saw him in True West, actually, with Kit Harrington. Uh, but uh, to start off with, he was in a play called Hangmen with Reese and David Morrissey at um, the Royal Court, then the Wyndhams... Uh, directed, uh, sorry, written by uh, Martin McDonough of In Bruges fame, of Pillow Man fame, of all that jazz. Uh, yeah, so, and also the um, the daughter in Love's Great Adventure, she was in that production of Hangman as well. Uh, it took, he went to Broadway with that, did Reese? Oh, well done, Reese. Well, no, that, wait, they went off Broadway with it and it was on Broadway and it got COVID and it can't oh. reopen because it doesn't have the budget. And it was Dan Stevens, and it was, um, what's her name? Bloody hell, she was in Follies for two years. I pissing saw her live. Oh my God, this is going to drive me mad. It's not Birds, is she in Birds of a Feather? It's not Leslie Joseph. <laughs> but she looks like Leslie Joseph. Oh, bloody hell, this is going to drive me mad. Follies. Um, NT Live. Oh, the shitting hell. Right, no, Imelda. We'll have to go through Imelda. Imelda, and then, where is it? Where is it? There, Follies. And her name is. Oh, for God's sake. Where is she? This is going to drive me insane. Uh, Tracy Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy Bennett. Um. Tra Tra Tracy Bennett. Uh, uh, private view. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you that tale. Uh, yeah, private view. So go on. What else don't you like? What what what's your argument for why it's so your number six? I think it's a bit clumsy. In what way? In which 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 I, parts? I think the the the, the right the sort of payoffs the if they were going to do and then there were none. They they could have done it a, in a better way. I I'm I'm just not a fan of this episode really. Mm. Um, it's fine. It's good. I watch it. I enjoy it. Um, but it, it's it was teased to me in this. It's due to the fact that it, it follows some of my favorite episodes. Also, it was teased to be something more maybe in the trailer because you only got that glimpse. Oh, what's that? That's it's exciting. That's it seems to be an awful lot scarier. Yeah. Um, than than uh, than it being so uh, I goryish. A lot of the scenes where where it's just I, I think it's it's the the dialogue for me that just does you could cut all of the scenes where the celebrities are talking to each other just stood there, and and it would have no impact. No, because it all, it's all little references to the organs. Yeah. That's, <sighs> mm, not for me. There we so, go. It's not clever writing, like uh, Riddle of the Sphinx. It's not clever writing, but did you guess the twist? Yeah. Really? <laughs> no, there you go. So it's, cle so it's smart, so it might not be too clever. Yeah. It's, it's a... It's exactly what I want. It's, it is clever, but it's not. It doesn't know it's clever. That's what it is. Sherlock knows it's clever, and Riddle of the Sphinx knows it's clever. I am in no way saying that Riddle of the Sphinx is as obnoxious as Sherlock in its Please cleverness. Don't. I love the Riddle of the Sphinx, but I also, yeah, it is my number six. Right, here we go. Let's tr let's attempt some ranking. So, I think, yeah, we've we've sort of shot ourselves in the foot with this uh, locked in rule. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be really nice. I'll just give you Sphinx. What number one? Yeah. What's your reasoning? Have I have I convinced you? No, I <laughs> no, I still think Private View. Is um, is is the best uh, episode? Um, how I'll be it? Um, I think when we when we do our top final rankings, um, I think it is a nice 
if we were to pick six episodes to showcase all of the show, I'll let you. I'd let you have Riddle of the Sphinx because it does highlight just how clever they are. Right, five and six that I'm definitely having orchestra at five. As soon as I've just given you that. Yeah, no, we can have we can have and orchestra then, at five. That's where I've got it. Um, and then dumpling at six. Dumpling six and private view at four. We'll do that. We'll do that. Okay, here we go. Number six, diddle diddle dumpling. Number five, empty orchestra. Number four, private view. Number three, the bill. Number two, the devil of Christmas. And oh, let's see. Uh, so that is season number three. Stay tuned. Season four is upcoming with just some great episodes. Zanzibar, Bernie Clifton's dressing room, once removed to having to hold, and the winner is and tempting fate. Very, very, very exciting, <laughs> wonderful news. This is marvellous. <laughs> what a show. Um, that series stole my heart. <laughs> Oh, shut it, you withered asshole. <laughs>